So feast your eyes upon the integument model. We have two models that we use in lab. This one and this one that show essentially the same thing, but the one that appears most often on the lab exam is this one. And we have, in this integument model, we have several features that we need to know for lab exam that are on this sheet, which are on your Moodle site. And they have the epidermis, dermis, hypodermis, all the structures within it, and the spe specific tissues that you need to know. And we'll go over them right now. Another good reference is page 154 on your book, is this figure, figure 5-1. So let's look at this one. Let's look first at the epidermis. And the epidermis, as you recall, is that stratified squamous epithelium that comprises the outermost layer of your skin. And the epidermis, along with the dermis, comprise the cutaneous membrane, which is your skin. And below that, we have the hypodermis. And the hypodermis is immediately recognizable because you have all this adipose tissue within it. And the adipose tissue is this bubbly yellow stuff. On this model, the adipose tissue is here. So once again, your cutaneous membrane is comprised of your epidermis and your dermis, and you have a lot of accessory structures originating within the dermis. So let's look again at the epidermis. And the epidermis consists of five layers in thick skin and four layers in thin skin. So thick skin is immediately recognizable because the outermost layer of the epidermis, called the stratum corneum, is thickest, and it's thicker than it is in thin skin. You can see it here on this model, and then you can see immediately adjacent to it on this part, this is thin skin, and then this is thick skin, and you can see how much taller this is than this. Likewise, with this model, you can see how much taller this is than this. Another feature of thick skin is it has this layer, that thin skin does not have. And this is called the stratum lucidum, or clear layer. On this model, it's this white line. On this model, it's this bluish white line. Directly below stratum lucidum, you have stratum granulosum. And then that's in all, that's both in thick and thin skin. So the stratum granulosum on this model would be these kind of oval cells here. And they're hard to distinguish from the underlying layer, which is stratum spinosum, because they're both this blue color but the stratum granulosum has sort of more of these oval shapes. And then below that, you have the stratum spinosum, which are these round shapes. And then below that, you have the stratum germinativum, which is the base layer here. It's this dark blue. And it is also known as the stratum basale, but this is where the stem cells are dividing and creating the cells that later push up into these upper layers. On this model, the granulosum, stratum granulosum, is right here. It's this kind of pinkish salmon colored line. And then below that we have stratum spinosum. That's this part here. And then the stratum germinativum is this one right here, also known as stratum, stratum basale. On the sheet for lab, it's just called stratum germinativum. And you'll notice that it has this wavy appearance. And that is because that it increases its surface area with the underlying layer called the dermis. And this, these ridges are called epidermal ridges. And they interface with the dermal papillae right here, which are these mounds. So if you were to strip the epidermis away and look at just the underlying dermis, you'd see this egg crate kind of shape here. And these are the dermal papillae. They're here on this model, and here they've just taken away the epidermis to show the dermis, the underlying dermal papillae. Now all of this, from here to here, is the dermis. We can see it from here to here as well. This is the dermis. Below that, the hypodermis, also known as the subcutaneous, because the dermis, the hypodermis, is below the dermis, and remember that the Subcutaneous, it's the same thing. It's another term for the same thing because it's below the cutaneous membrane, which is both the dermis and the epidermis. The cutaneous membrane is all of skin. So within the dermis, we have some accessory structures that we need to know. We have some hairs here, and the hairs sit within these follicles. So this thing that the hair sits in is a follicle. On this one, we have a hair follicle as well. 
Almost all hairs have these smooth muscles associated with them that will make them stand up on end. This is a smooth muscle. This is a smooth muscle. And basically these are called erector pili. They're on your sheet. And these erector pili, when you get cold or you get scared, will make your hair stand on end. On this model, it's right here. And this is basically a smooth muscle that attaches to this hair follicle and attaches it to the underlying part of the epidermis. And so that when this muscle pulls, it'll make the hair stand up on end. Associated with hair cell, or sorry, hair follicles, we often have these glands. These are sebaceous glands, these sac-like glandular structures. You can see one here. You can see one in cross-section here. And there's the sac-like appearance that they have. They're always going to be purple on this model. On this model, you can see one in cross-section here and one here. And these are sebaceous glands. We have another type of gland that we need to know, and these are called merocrine sweat glands. And these are what are important for what we associate with sensible perspiration or the kind of sweat that we feel when we get hot. And notice these tubular structures, these tubular glands that originate in the dermis and then they empty out onto the epidermis here. Here's one in cross section. Here is a merocrine sweat gland. Here is one in cross section. And you're probably wondering what this is. This is an apocrine sweat gland and this is associated with this hair cell, or this hair, sorry, this hair. Um, and unfortunately, it's not on your list, so that's probably why they use this model, because it doesn't have one. So the reason that I point it out is so you don't get it confused with a merocrine sweat gland, which looks somewhat similar in that it has this tubular structure. But the merocrine sweat gland is just typically a sweat gland that empties out onto the epidermal surface. Now, we also have the tactile receptors in skin. We have these little tactile discs right here, also called tactile corpuscles, and they have this nerve tissue leading away because they will convey information about touch and sense. And you can feel light touch with these things, and they will convey information down this neural tissue, conduct impulses about the sensory perception that these things receive. All right, you also have something called a lamellated corpuscle, and this is so-called because it's in layers, or lamellae, and you can see them here on this model as well. And you see they have these layers, and they're deeper, whereas the tactile corpuscles are usually right here in the, in the dermal papillae. You can see that the lamellated corpuscles are deeper, and they're sensitive to pressure. So as you press down on skin, and you convey force through here, then these layers are going to compress onto one another. And so anytime you see this yellow tissue leading away from a tactile corpuscle or lam lamellated corpuscle, all of this stuff leading away is nervous tissue because it's carrying the impulses to the central nervous system and to the brain to tell you what's going on within your skin. All right, you also have a few other structures in here that you need to know. You need to know blood vessels. And the blood vessels are the arteries or the red ones. They're also here, red ones. You can see a few in cross section. The veins are blue. And you can see veins here, and you can see a vein here, you can see veins here. And you can also see this line of arteries and veins, and they create these capillaries in the dermal papillae. And these are important because this is part of your subpapillary plexus, but the subpapillary plexus differentiates the dermis into two separate layers, one of which is areal or connective tissue, the top layer here above the subpapillary plexus, and then below it you have dense regular connective tissue. And so those are in your tissues that you need to know for your exam. The erector pili, these are smooth muscle. All this yellow stuff is nervous tissue. It's here as well. On this one is also nervous tissue. So I believe we've covered everything we need to know for our lab test, our lab exam.